Assalamu alaikum. I extend the greetings of peace to all the audience who have been kind enough to join us this afternoon. Sri Endra, who is the inaugurator of uh, this academy, who is present here today, and an extremely good friend of mine, a person who has always stood up for uh, all the values of tolerance, values of uh, secularism, inclusivism, pluralism, and uh, socialism. A person who has been subscribing to all these values in spite of having come from a very, very rich background. Uh, I welcome you. I welcome you, Mr. Ram, to, to this uh, uh, function and your kindness to that we need to inaugurate. Dr. Chai Muhammad uh, Iqbal Sahar, who is also an educationist uh, and activist from Malaysia. Then uh, we have uh, today Dr. Vasanti Dini, former Vice Chancellor of uh, Tamil Nadu University and thereafter a great uh, activist who has been uh, uh, taking up the lost causes of India in every every meeting that uh, she either attended had the pleasure of attending with her. Uh, Mufti Qazi Salahuddin Sahab, the chief Qazi of uh, Tamil Nadu, and a stalwart who has been holding up, uh, upholding all the uh, causes of the community. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Sadiq, ex vice chancellor of the Madras uh, University. Mr. Amin, Saidai Doraisami, Sahar, who is also present here, former uh, mayor of uh, Madras, and more than that, uh, the mayorship is a very temporary position, it comes and goes. But uh, he has been uh, running an institution for training uh, students for the Indian Administrative Service and the other civil services and has produced a number of uh, <coughs> civil servants from various communities which is there. And that he has been doing free without any fees being charged, which is a great, uh, great service to the people uh, of India. Then we have uh, uh, Mr. Nakiran Gopal, uh, who also has stood up again, again for very many lost causes and has got into trouble for that. So, <laughs> but he never minded the trouble. He faced uh, uh, a judicial opprobrium and the criminal charges and God knows what else. I have been reading about it in the newspapers. I compliment him and welcome him uh, today. Uh, Mr. Dani and uh, finally, this most important uh, of all, though I am mentioning his name at the end, because he is the spirit and soul of the academy which is being inaugurated today. There are Dawood Nyan Khan Sahab. Dawood Nyan Khan Sahab is not uh, only the general secretary. Uh, I, I am only a, uh, what do I call a nominal chairman of the advisory board, but the real person is Dr. Prabhup, Dawood Nyan Khan Sahab, who has been uh, so active in establishing this academy and I had uh, the pleasure of uh, visiting uh, the premises a few days back and in a short period of time how much of equipment, how many people, how much of money he has been able to garner and spend to start this academy and I think that uh, with the kind of commitment, enthusiasm and uh, spirit I'm sure that this academy is going to prove a great asset. To my knowledge, to my knowledge, uh, in, uh, in uh, at least in Tamil Nadu, uh, only the uh, Asian College of uh, Journalism has been working. I do not think that uh, there is any other institution, standalone institution, which is imparting education in media studies. This is the only second one which uh, uh, is 
going to uh, perform human service. Many, many years ago, the famous part, Farsi uh, Bishali, whose name I'm sure most of you must have heard, he uh, uh, said that poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world. That's how I'm quoting uh, Shelley, who said that poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world. Today, I think that uh, that statement of Shelley has to be modified. We will have to say that the media is the unacknowledged legislator of the world. They are the ones who are changing the laws of this country, who are the ones who are framing the law of this country, and they are the ones who are really influencing entire public opinion all over the world. So therefore, I would say that uh, today, though the, though the uh, poets are also uh, playing their role, but the media is playing a far more important role. Media has got the responsibility to to uh, inform, elucidate, and educate the public. These are the three major roles of the media. And uh, apart from its role of uh, information, adumbrating information, and uh, connecting that information, you know, one with the other, and drawing conclusions and elucidating what is the significance of particular uh, pieces of information. Uh, the more important aspect is that it is educating a society on a continuous basis. Many, many years ago, a very famous uh, uh, British diplomat, Lagarde Eaton, uh, who was ambassador to uh, Egypt, he said that uh, an inefficient and uh, corrupt bureaucracy uh, an inefficient and corrupt bureaucracy is the greatest bulwark against dictatorship. A very revolutionary statement. Uh, if a bureaucracy is corrupt and a bureaucracy is inefficient, dictatorship cannot flourish in that country. This is this is a statement made by the famous uh, uh, diplomat uh, Levi Peter. Uh, Hitler could flourish for a brief period of time because initially he was able to command a fairly non-corrupt, efficient bureaucracy and that is how he managed to eliminate uh, 6 million uh, Jews in uh, uh, all over Europe in the latter part. Uh, that that uh, uh, bureaucracy became quite corrupt started amassing money, uh, amassing artworks and uh, uh, having huge uh, underground uh, storages for the greatest paintings and artwork of the world and so on. And uh, sure enough, that led, to, that led to his downfall. India also tried this for some time in 1975 when uh, Indira Gandhi imposed uh, uh, the emergency and tried to run a dictatorship in India. That also lasted for a very short period, even shorter than the Hitler's period once again because during that period, I would say that that was the period when, and I have been a bureaucrat since 1960, and I have seen India, such a clean country at that time, from 1960 onwards, that we could name in a state like Gujarat, where I was posted for many years, 25 years, and in a state like Gujarat, I could claim that not more than one or two officers at the highest level were cut. In fact, there was a gentleman, I would not name him because he is no more. People used to tell me that uh, when he died, he left uh, 8 lakh rupees in his bank palace. Uh, when people's salaries used to be counted in uh, hundreds, like uh, uh, the salary of a uh, collector and district magistrate in my time was only 750 rupees. And uh, with 750 rupees of salary, uh, to amass 8 lakh rupees was quite a substantial amount of money. Today, 8 lakh rupees for many, many civil servants is a piffle. <laughs> it is, it is uh, 
uh, uh, it is running into cross. Yesterday's newspaper said that a commercial tax officer in uh, UP, when his house was uh, raided, uh, five kilograms of gold and uh, and ten crore rupees of cash has been recovered from his house, and that too before any of his lockers have been opened. <laughs> now this is the state of affairs, and with that kind of a corruption which started from 1975 onwards, when the civil servants who were who were supposed to be Balwak of the nation, who were supposed to be honest and who were supposed to give the correct advice. Uh, the other day I was uh, 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 reading the speech which was given by the Home Minister to, on the Civil Service Day. And in that speech he made it very clear. He said it is the responsibility of all civil servants to give correct advice to their ministers. And if their ministers are going to commit any mistakes, then it is the responsibility of the civil servant to point out with all politeness that you are passing this order against rules and you are not supposed to pass these orders against rules. I, I in my own way, I communicated that uh, it is very good advice, but it has to be implemented at the field level. <laughs> implemented at the secretariat level, implemented at the sales tax officer's level, implemented at the village officer's level. These are, the, these are the issues which our media is highlighting today. And uh, as, I, as I mentioned, the responsible media, a media which is conscious of uh, its role in the society, its uh, uh, role to address the most important issues which are facing our society today, both at the national as well as at the global level. At the national level, look at Delhi. Delhi is uh, considered now not the national capital of India, but the rape capital of India. Every, every three minutes, a, a rape is being committed there. And uh, we have got uh, 8,000 dowry deaths taking place in India. 8,000 dowry deaths. And uh, we have got uh, figures which say that the gender uh, ratio uh, states like Haryana and Punjab has been reduced to 125 men for every 100 women. That means that the infanticide uh, of female infanticide is rampant in these uh, states. Female feticide uh, and the female infanticide both is taking place there. So as a result, it has gone up. Uh, ratio has gone down to 126 to 100. Uh, and even at the national level, from 1981 to today, if you look at the figures, the statistics, you see that uh, from uh, a ratio of uh, something like 102 to 100, it has come down to 111 or 112 to 100. So that, there also the, the figure has uh, considerably uh, deteriorated. These are the issues which the media has to highlight elucidate and educate the society. At the global level, we know what is happening. Quite possibly, most probably, uh, I don't know, I'm, uh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Uh, people like uh, Donald Trump's rise in the United States. And uh, as a follow-up of that uh, rise of uh, Mr. Donald Trump in the uh, uh, United States, uh, the horizon in uh, France, the horizon in uh, Germany, the horizon in Italy, the horizon in so many other countries is throwing up uh, more rightist leaders. Yesterday's uh, Hindu, or today's Hindu, indicated that uh, with the with one policeman, mad policeman, I mean, one mad terrorist, goes and kills a policeman in Paris, and everybody wants to go and vote a dictatorship into power. Somebody. Some rightists will come to power in France, some rightists will come to power in Germany. Uh, Merkel will probably uh, lose the election. Now, this is something which is very, very dangerous for everybody. Dangerous for our country also, because the only control today on uh, dictatorship, on arbitrariness, on misgovernance, on uh, corruption in the country, 
in all, in all these issues, the only control that can be exerted is not by the parliament. Parliament can meet and discuss and uh, uh, do whatever they want to do uh, during the brief periods that uh, they meet before they uh, resolve themselves. The only, only power which is a continuous power, both at the national level, both at the uh, state level, both at the village level, is the media. Whether it is the print media, whether it is the electronic media, or whether it is the social media, these are the, these are the agencies which can exert a very strong control over dictatorships, over arbitrariness, over misgovernance, over corruption. By exposing all these deals, we are we are facing quite a number of challenges in this country. Uh, we are going, we are having Gaurakshaks who have gone mad and go about killing people in Dagri and in Arwar and so on, just on the suspicion that uh, a cow has been slaughtered. Uh, in, the, in some of the media, as I was mentioning, uh, more important news is the death of a cow rather than uh, the, the death of a person who is suspected to have killed that cow. So the death of a cow is given far greater importance in some of the uh, uh, media. This has to go. People have to learn that this country is going to survive. If at all it survives, this country is going to survive as a united country, as a tolerant country, as a pluralistic country, as an inclusivist country. It cannot survive on the basis of any single religion. A single religion concept will have to go and the media will have to play its role into educating society in towards that field. Thank you very much.